Praise the Lord. God bless you, soldiers. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Before I even start this message, and I will be teaching on the fragmented soul, insight on how to pray for the fragmented soul. And when we use the term fragmented soul, we're simply talking about how that there are areas of our life where emotionally we can be torn, bound, or even need healing or deliverance to get those areas set back in order. And we're coming out of Psalms chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Um, I want to take time also to thank all of you who cash app us a $5 donation. I appreciate that. It helps Evelyn and I. And by the way, it's not something you have to do. Those of you who donate to our teachings, we appreciate it. But we don't have no mandate where you got to do this. But those that will appreciate to do this for us, to cash up us at General Ivory Hopkins, we will appreciate it and every little bit helps us. Otherwise, enjoy that message. Amen. And enjoy the teaching on the fragmented soul. Insight on how to pray for the fragmented soul where I'm about to teach. I'm going to be talking about the fragmented soul. And it was a good question. Whoever asked it was an excellent question. Uh, the fragmented soul is where the mind, will, and emotions has been captured by an event or a situation that has caused a person's personality to be arrested in its development, bound in its activity, or stuck in a particular place. Everybody got that? So if my soul gets fragmented, we're in, let's say, because I'm going to be talking about the evil soul ties of abuse. If my soul gets fragmented, my abuser and the things that happen to me in that abuse call, has caused me to become arrested in my development. In other words, you can have a, a PhD degree, but when it comes to an abuser, you can act just like you're stuck on stupid. Matter of fact, folks will look at you and go, Ivory. Ivory, what in the world has happened to you? Ever since you got with so-and-so, you are just as messed up. And I mean, you are intelligent. But intelligence has nothing to do with it. If a person forms an evil soul tie with an individual that is an abuser, that abuser, depending on your surrender, will begin to re I'll reform you into another image. Amen? Yeah. We're going to look at Matthew's chapter 23, 22, beginning at Matthew's 22, uh, beginning at verse 35. Now, I want y'all to follow along with me because I move a little quick. I give a lot of information in a short period of time. Amen? I do want to say that two speakers before me did a marvelous job Amen. teaching on deliverance, teaching, teaching on holiness, teaching on the surrender life. You know, I will put this at the top of this tape. I usually say it on many of them. Remember, you don't do what you do because you got a demon. You often get demons because of what you're doing. All right. Okay. Now, evil soul ties, breaking evil soul ties of abuse. Breaking evil soul ties of abuse. Now, number one, I'm going to interpret the word soul tie. A soul tie can be good or bad. Got it? A soul tie is a strong emotional bond between a person, place, or thing that can be good or evil depending on the interaction. Depending on, say it with me, the interaction. The lawyers asked Jesus a question. And the question that they asked him, Jesus answers, and I want you to check this out. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus answered in verse 27. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. Now, if God is saying if this is the great commandment, and the soul, mind, and will, are the mind, will, and emotions are what the soul is, then it is possible not to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and all of our mind. It is possible to have an area of your life in your mind, will, and emotion. Case in point, an addict or an addiction. You can have an addiction in your life. Now, I'm not, I'm not even going to start with an addiction of sin. 
I, let's talk about what addiction. I'll mess with me. Let's talk about the addiction of overeating. All right. All right. I love Jesus. Tell you, no, I rock. No, no, not what Jesus rocks. Right. I mean, I just love me some Jesus. Yeah. But my soul has to get disconnected to whatever is operating that causes me to destroy my own body. Got it? Now, most people who even, and I'm not a psychologist, but sometimes wisdom is wisdom no matter where it comes from. And it's basically understood that an eating disorder is closely tied to an emotional realm. Everybody hear what I'm saying? So in my pursuit of deliverance, in my pursuit of healing, yes, I go for the book of man. Come out in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, I bind you, da, da, da. But I also have come to the conclusion and narrowed it down as to what the wound was in my life that made me to use food as an addiction. Before it was food, it was drugs. Come on. Got that? So what happened was I got saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire. And I gave my life to the Lord, but my the stronghold, the wound inside of me, the wound in my soul. That this overweightness is linked to that wound had to find an acceptable area to dwell. Now, if I was still doing cocaine, that ain't gonna work. Preacher plus cocaine means backslidden on your way to hell. Everybody got that? So, with my body, my body didn't say, Well, I ain't gonna drink liquor. I don't like drinking no hell. So, it couldn't choose that. So what it found was an acceptable, legitimate stronghold that might not send you to hell, but it sure enough will make your life miserable carrying all this weight. Is anybody understanding me? Now I'm using me as an example. That way you don't have to feel bad. And to all my YouTube folks, I look in the mirror every day. I know I'm overweight. That's exactly why I have a paid trainer that works with me weekly. That's why I have dietary things that I avoid. Everybody, can I hear amen? amen. I like, you have to put stuff like this because the more well-known you become, the more people try to find a way to escape the truth you're saying. Yes. Truth is, my weight is a bondage. Truth is, God is delivering me. He doth deliver. He yet delivers. And I trust he shall continue to deliver. Can anybody say amen? Amen. But Apostle, I found, I found out in the emotions what this was operating, and we've slayed that dragon. Yes. And guess what? It's the, the weight loss and dealing with it now is much easier. What am I trying to say? Glad you asked. The emotional thing that happened to me that caused me to feed into drugs, feed into addiction, we found out what it was. In getting that healed, dealing with the weight is much easier. Yes. Is everybody understanding me? So my soul now, and Isaiah chapter 27, it's a scripture, the Bible that says, the soul hath appetite. Yes. And the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions, the intellect, the desires can have appetite. Conquer by the power of the Holy Spirit, the wound, you can conquer the addiction. Give God a great big hand, praise. All right. But it said, Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. And I want to say this to everybody in here. The plan of the enemy, and now I'm getting back straight on my subject now. The plan of the enemy is to bind us with, with evil soul ties to abusers. Why does he want to do that? Because one thing the enemy knows is a person that is not serving the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind, there are things in life they'll not accomplish. I need, look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, thou must serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. Because if the enemy is able to get you to a place where you cannot serve God with all of it, Guess what will happen? That part that he binds will be a conflict and a hindrance throughout your life. Some of people act real, real shocked. Reverend so-and-so, they found in a hotel on drugs or doing this and that. Why are you shocked? Well, why are you shocked? People are bound. 
The only thing, the reason why Reverend so and so probably got got messed up so bad is because the church has designed itself with a lie it preaches across the pulpit. And that lie is if you're anointed, this can't happen. Uh oh, uh oh, that's it. But I maintain to tell you, all you preachers, all you bishops, all you fivefold ministries that I respect highly, I respect you. But tell the truth and shame the devil. Even the Apostle Paul said it, and I think it's 1 Corinthians 9 27. Though I preach the gospel with many souls, keep not myself under subjection. I too shall be a castaway. He turns around and says in Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Satan is a roaring lion, seeking a walk of about, seeking whom he may devour. Come on, somebody. So who is whom? Anybody? So I say what the church needs to do is to go on man up and woman up and say, you know what? I've got issues. I need to check and discern the correct discernment, the correct diagnosis, the correct thing to do with it. I want to find out if this is a stronghold in my life that is of an emotional source but not a demon, then I need to deal with that. If this is a stronghold in my life that, has, that is emotional but got demons in it, I need to deal with that. Is everybody hearing me? But instead, I ask you, how you doing? You, just like, listen, don't sit here this evening with a one-on-one with me and tell me you're blessed and highly favored. <laughs> now somebody go like, did he say that? You can't tell him you're blessed and highly favored? Don't sit in that chair perpetrating when we're here for deliverance. I'm wounded, I'm hurt, I'm, I, listen, I got this bondage or I'm trying to get free from this. I'm trying to get a breakthrough here. Don't play me. Amen. Come on now. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes, Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, Lord, I thank you for this man of God. Because he's just keeping it very simple. Yes. But an evil soul tie is with an abuser is founded upon manipulation. The intent, the person may be good looking, may be a family member, may be just what you always wanted, praise God. But that the signs of what you're getting will determine what you got. The signs of what you're getting will determine what you got. What you got. Here goes the signs of being manipulated. The word manipulate divine means to control or play upon by artful and unfair and insidious means. It means the ones who takes advantage of an individual. One who uses an individual or one who comes in your life with another agenda. I like that one better than all of them. A manipulator, a controller comes in your life with another agenda. You two ain't on the same page. You gone in for commitment, they're going in for what they want. And their commitment only lasts as long as what they want. Okay, now, here goes some manifestations that, that we have seen. I have seen people, listen at this, I have seen people have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that was a manipulator, that was an abuser. You got that? And marry someone that is a good person. Got that? And they still craving the abuser. The good person don't even turn them on. The, the, the person that is decent and treats them like something, they're not happy with them. Listen to this apostle. I have seen folks that, listen to this, have soul ties with former lovers. Strong emotional bond with a struggle, with a person you were formerly with. This soul tie from previous marriage will destroy marriages. And they're usually soul ties with old girlfriends or boyfriends. They will destroy a marriage. If you find yourself constantly preparing your mate with someone you used to be with, you have an evil soul tie that needs to be broken. If while you're having sex, you find yourself thinking of them and comparing the sex you have with them to the other person, you have an evil soul tie. Being drawn or fantasizing about a former lover you used to be with is a sign that you have an evil soul tie. Now, Brother Hopkins, why would you say that? Glad you asked. In one of our deliverance conferences we were doing in California, a precious Latino sister came for up for prayer. The ladies were working with her, and they were trying to command this demon to come out of her. It was not moving. 
I walked over, sometimes when we're doing deliverances, I, uh, especially with our training teams out of, of Phoenix and California, I walked over and I asked them, I said, what you got there? They said, right now she seems like she's not breaking. And the Holy Spirit said, whisper in her ear exactly what I tell her. I tell you to tell her. I, the Holy Spirit tells me these words. It says, whisper in her ear, ear that in Jesus' name you break what that boyfriend that used to go with her that tagged her and said, you're mine. And I didn't know what they really, I mean, we, we out the street might know what that means, but I didn't know exactly what it was talking about. So I, 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 I got down on my knees, the ladies were holding her, the ladies' hands were holding her, not mine. And I whispered in her ear, I said, in the name of Jesus, that boyfriend that told you that he tagged it and it's his, I command his power to be broken. All of a sudden, that demon turned over in her and started fighting, said, you SOB, who told you who I was? And we commanded to go. I told the sister, I said, sis, I said, you're going to have to renounce. Now, listen to me. We cannot break strongholds off your life that are still your friends. Uh -oh. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you got to let it go. Say, so you got to come in agreement to let it go. Now, it will seem to someone that I, I was on the floor and I'm so powerful. I'm commanded it to go. It did not work that way. I had to bring her back from under the, the demonic manifestation. That's right. I said in Jesus' name, I bind you right now from flapping on the floor. Most people would use that to prove how anointed they was. Yes. But I wasn't trying to prove how anointed my, how they were. I, I was. My way of doing deliverance is get it out fast as possible next. Not try to see, let people look at me and see if I'm some hot shot. Right. So I, I bound, I'm trying to train you here. I bound the demon up, brought the person back. I said, baby girl, look at me. She looked at me. She said, yes, apostle. Yes, yes. I said, look at me. I said, I want to ask you something. I said, I feel that the Holy Spirit showed me that you had a boyfriend, that he did something to you. Baby girl, I don't want to know too much information. All right. I said, but he said he tagged you. And she held her head down sadly. And he said, no one else will have it. It's all mine. I said, sweetheart. And she turned around to me. She said, and she said, and that's what I'm up here for prayer for. My husband and I cannot be intimate. When my husband tries to be with me the way a husband should be with his wife because I am his wife. She says, something in me is fighting me. It's fighting me. And I come to find out that it was a Latino, the young man that she was with was a Latino rock star that had went to a voodoo, a centurion, and had witchcraft put on her. And the body part that he had witchcraft put on would not function with her husband. Now somebody go, I, 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 praise God, I'm covered with the blood. They could have never taught me. Honey, the way the enemy was able to enact that bondage was her being in agreement in sin. Yes. That's it. That's it. Oh, you understanding me? When we share these things, before you get all cute, come on, boss. get a clue, please. Yeah. And listen, the Bible, Proverbs 26, 2, the curse without a cause does not come. What happened with her was, now listen, before salvation, the enemy had got her in agreement with a young man that was doing, doing witchcraft, voodoo. That he bound her, and that's why he was, when he got intimate with her, it was a different heightened intimacy. I'm a gentleman. You got it? Yes, sir. When she gave her life to the Lord, broke up with him, the demon said, we still got a part here that, that she ain't don't even know is here. So now you go, legal right and legal ground. She gave her life to Jesus. Now, the Jesus that she gave her life to, to our Lord and Savior, is going to now set her free in an area where she never even was thinking about. Because she didn't understand that what she did was allowed him to put demons inside of her female organs that was making things feel mighty good. But in reality, it was demonic. So, I got her to, I brought her back, because guess what? If she did not say out of her own mouth, in her own language, I turn against this, I renounce this, Lord Jesus, I don't want this out of my life and by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I, be I belong to my legitimate husband. I command these demons to go that was put on me. I could not have set her free.
Now you can call me the general of deliverance. You can call me, call me anything you want to call me. I cannot set a person free who does not want it themselves. Can I give God? Can you give God a big big hand, please? After I led her in that prayer of turning against, I'm trying to be simplistic as I can be. Turning against, totally renouncing it. Then when we went back. We sat that, that, that the sisters were still right there with me. Three ladies were still right there. I said, are you ready, baby girl? Because I talk to people like that because I just love folk. I said, baby girl, are you ready? She said, yes, sir, yes, sir. I said, watch this. In the name of Jesus, you got to go. All of a sudden, that demon came. Uh, uh, I said, shut up. Get out. And all of a sudden, boom, it broke. Are you understanding me? Now, what broke the stronghold? First of all, what broke the stronghold, one, was discerning of spirit. Got that? Uh, I'm going to add this one into your list. Two, I didn't try to put on a performance in front of people. Amen. No, that's very important. Because see, God, the Lord's not going to share his glory with anyone. Not even us deliverance preachers. Three, I brought her back from the manifestation where she was flapping on the floor and got her conscious enough to talk for herself. Because I could not now. Sometimes in deliverance, a victim, I'm going to use the term victim, I hate using the term victim, but I will. Sometimes in deliverance, the victim is so submerged by the demonic stronghold that you can got the power of binding and loosing. I, if she was that submerged, where she could not have come back, uh, 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 Pastor Ricky, if she could not come back and talk for herself, the Lord would allow me apostolic authority or authority as a believer. I don't want to make it so deep. Authority as a believer, I could uh, t tell the demon straight up in Jesus' name, you got her locked down? Well, in Jesus' name, I intercede. I intercede to the Lord Jesus Christ who is the only true mediator between God and man on her behalf. I stand proxy in Jesus' name and renounce you. Y'all got that? That's if, that's if she would not come back to the surface. That's if she was so submerged by the demonic bondage that I couldn't bring her up. Then it, that, that, that would have been the method I would have used. And we've seen God break that way. Are you getting this? Yes. Is uh -huh. that the difference between um, suppression and possession? Well, somewhat. Some, some, somewhat. I, I'm not going to really. I'm going to have to stay right in this line here. What I mean. um, what, cause, cause I'm, I need to stay in this line. I've got something going on here. So, so excuse me. He has a question. But I wasn't able to incorporate it because my head is all, all over this. But anyway, so with her, with her. Now, oh, by the way, I think. Come, come to me so we can get this on tape. Define better suppression, what you're talking about. We're using terms differently, B, but define, define suppression. The, the suppression deals with the soul aspect. Like she said, it was part of her desire, her appetite. Oh. But because she could not hear you, or you said if she couldn't hear you. Right, okay, got gotcha. you. It, it was total manifestation, it was total takeover. So that was that suppression. She was possessed. Mm -hmm. right? So now you're dealing with the spirit instead of just the person. Right, yes. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Wait on, let's get back with me hand praise. By the way, when you're studying deliverance in different deliverance campuses, the language of different ones of us can differ. But just like when he explained what he was talking about, I got it. I got it. Amen? So, but when, so what I had ended up doing was having her to come conscious and got her to renounce it. It broke the demonic stronghold. But she, the reason why that spirit was able to hold that girl so deep, because she had given herself over to him. What broke them up was he was abusing her. Anybody, listen to me, anybody that tries to control you, even, see, when we speak of manipulation, abuse, and control, people always think of somebody beating you upside the head. Oh, no. There is provisional control. What is provisional control? I interpret provisional control being this. I work and I have a home that me and Evelyn have together. Me and Evelyn together have uh, had children together. We have done a number of things. But I suppose we did it together, but I let Evelyn know straight. I'm out here working like this and what, they, what have you and stuff, and I can tell you right now, I can soon put you out of my house. Yeah, that's suppose I told Evelyn, you very lucky I even let you stay in my house. Is anybody getting this? Now, now, what's the problem here? The Bible says the two shall be made one. So how is it just my house? Somebody's not getting this. Huh? I done lost three people. Huh? I'm going to say it again. 
The Bible said that the husband and wife are to be knit together, to cleave one to another. The first approved soul tie on the planet was met between a husband and wife. And matter of fact, he made it so cool, God must have really knew the future like he does. Then shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Got that? So, by me leaving and cleaving to Evelyn, we have what we call a holy soul tie. But if I was a twisted, insecure man, twisted, insecure man, I would let her know right straight at every opportunity I could throw off on her. You know you're just living here because because I've been out on the road preaching and, and, and I've been doing such great ministry. Listen to that fool. How many, y'all, y'all are laughing, but y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Because you've heard it before. I maintain to tell you that that mindset is a mindset that is an abusive mindset, even if it's on a low level. And it will grow if you don't change your attitude. Our house is our house. Our children is our children. Are you understanding it? Give God a big, big hand, praise. Well, you got your crayons out, let me give you uh, the list of, of how telling when you're in a position of manipulation and control. Your spirit man loses its rest or peacefulness. You're in a relationship and your spirit man loses its rest or peacefulness. When we break it down in simple language, you're darn near hate to go home. Emotionally, you feel intruded on. In other words, if, if I was, if I was a, an abuser of Evelyn and what have you, at, at, at some point she would almost feel like, when I talk to her, she'd almost like, God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, don't manifest too quick some of you. We're going to pray for you. You seemingly automatically do things out of character when you're around a certain person or persons. Their family knows you as a strong man of God or a strong woman of God. But when they see you with this character, you go like, what in the world happened? They're, 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 they are talking to you in a manner that everybody in your family, somebody say everybody. Everybody in your family knew that you wouldn't tolerate that. But in this situation, whoever says you met this person, you tolerate foolishness. They see you surrendering the cho- they, they, see, they see you surrendering the common sense will to say, I won't take that. Next one, you make commitments to things that feel you were seduced to do so. Okay? After thinking what you did, you feel like you weren't yourself. Manipulation, got that? Here goes another one. You feel angry because you know you've been played. You get ready to come around now. And you feel as if you're being made to do something whether you should or not. You're always feeling like you're being made to do it. Is anybody hearing me? Amen. Amen. Let me go to the next, sec- next section. Uh, uh, now, here goes this. Thing. The, this I, I got here number one sign of an evil soul tie is the loss of your ability to make common sense decisions. The loss of your ability to make common sense decisions. Listen what happens. You sacrifice your life, your time, your hopes, your dreams, and even your family to your abuser. I'm going to say it again. You sacrifice your life, do they? Your time, do they? Your hopes, do they? Your dreams, do they? Even your family, do they? To your abuser. So look at your neighbor and say, do they? See? Now, when it's a mutual, uncontrolling situation, it's like me and my wife, we decide what we're going to do with our time. We, we decide. We, oh, do you know why me and my little anointed self is in here today? Because we decided. Wait a minute. God told you to come here. We decide. I know it's going to mess you up. Come on, come on. I'm a married man. I can't just decide to come to Florida. I can't wake up, yawn, shout three times, young man, and go, praise the Lord. I'm on my way to Florida. 
when my son talked to me about this meeting, what I said to Apostle Gaspin was, we're going to talk to mom. And we're going to get our books together. And we're going to see what's what. Now, my wife has never told me I can't go somewhere. But you know what? Neither has my arm ever told me that I couldn't go. I just know I want to confer with that arm to go where I'm going. I don't want that arm not to be there. Somebody don't get that. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying to you? You mean to tell me that you need permission? I mean to tell you I invited permission into my life. The other signs is lack of wisdom and your value system becomes distorted. Lack of wisdom and your value system becomes distorted. Doing things with them against the truth you know. Wow. Wow. Got that? Amen. Doing things with them. I'm talking about an evil soul tie. I never will forget, and I can share this on this tape, because my cousin don't mind. I'll never name her name, no way. You wouldn't know her. But my cousin was running a married man. And, 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 and it was on. <laughs> it was on. Y'all hear me? She came to because she'd been brought up in church. And this guy, he was quite well. He wasn't, didn't, didn't know the Lord from a lizard. He was comfortable. Well, he, he was comfortable. All he had to do was sit back and wait and rendezvous. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't blame me. And my cousin said these words to me. I will never forget it. She said, Ivory. I said, what is it, cuz? Because she'd tell me anything, just about anything. We were just like that. She said, Ivory. I said, what is it, cuz? She said, I want to ask you something. You know I ain't living right. I said, I know. She said, you know, you know, you know I want to get my life right with Jesus. I said, uh-huh. She said, Aubrey, if I let him go, will it hurt? I said, very badly. She said, what? I said, when you go, when you go to turn loose this man that you've got no business with, it's going to tear your heart up. He does not belong to you anyway. She said, I know. She said, but I want to let him go and nobody get hurt. I said, can't happen. You're going to go through a depression when it breaks off. You're going to go through wanting to go back just one more time. It, maybe two. <laughs> I'm messing with you. You know I'm messing with you from last night. And, and you're, going to go, you're going to go, your emotions are going to go through depression. You're going to know the word says this. And you're going to know God will give you strength. But don't let nobody lie to you tell you God set you free and you're going to feel nothing. The only way you feel nothing about a situation like that, it wasn't nothing anyway. That's right. That's right. You didn't have a soul tie. Y'all were just lusting. Call it what it is, big boys and girls. And let's move on to a place called next. A <laughs> uh, place called next. So anyway... And when, they, when she broke up and when she told him that it had to end, when she did that and what have you. And by the way, I'm going to tell you the blessing. Look at say, tell me the blessing. She never found a real husband until she left somebody else's alone. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to be all wise and get up in your business, of course. But lack of wisdom and your value system becomes distorted. Doing things with an abuser. That's against the truth you know. Evil soul ties with abuser begins to lose their own. Evil soul ties with an abusers begin to cause you to lose your own character, personality, and nature. And we usually say it like this. I ain't been myself ever since I've been with them. And oh God, when you wake up. Oh, when you wake up. You go like, oh my God. God, what happened to me? <laughs> Man, you go like, what happened to me? You understand? You Because you're not in your right mind. See, you thought the Gadarene was the only one that wasn't clothed in his right mind. That relationship truly was not only a metaphor, but a reality. Unclothed and out of your right mind. Did you get this? And so what happens is, is that your personality and your characters change. Family and friends will say, you know, since you have been with him or her, you haven't been the same person. Got that? When I dated and married my wife, she's the same person that I dated and married. Because I didn't want a different Evelyn. I wanted Evelyn. 
Talk about it's not getting there. Abusers will admire you and try to make you somebody you're not. Yeah. That's it. Do, do, do you understand me? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come in because I could say a whole. Oh, well, I could. I, I could really say. I could really say a whole lot. Can you imagine? Sometimes we do with our, do with mates. I'm talking to men. Sometimes we do with mates what some people do with pornography. You want something different, so you dress it a different way. Now, when you said what you said last night, Apostle, about how he wanted you to dress like a hoochie. What, ha- what was happening, I'm just going to tell the truth and shame the devil. What was happening, the bondage and lust in him was going for body parts and he was trying to reconform you into something he'd been trying to get. That's right. That's right. That's right. People who truly love you, a husband or a wife who truly loves you, you are who you are is good enough. Yes. Are you hearing me? Now, as, as, can, I, can anybody hear what I'm saying? Who you love is good enough. Now here goes, I'm just, I am not getting all up in this. Man folks is uh, uh, fun because I ain't got nothing to do with that. But I know something is seriously wrong when a person has you to some people are so bound up, controlling they almost duplicate you into the last woman they had. That is a stronghold and you're being abused and you can tell it. Ladies and gentlemen you can tell when this is operating. You you talked about what Jerry Springer and them. I never will forget one show that I saw, and I don't know whether it was Jerry Springer or where it was, because I, I don't know. I know it was Cheaters. This old man had got with this young girl who had a boyfriend in prison. She abused that man, used his money, and told him straight up on Nationwide TV, "Yeah, I took you for your money. Matter of fact, I gave it to him." And he said to her, why are you so cruel to me like that? And I, the guy was trying to be as nice as he ever wanted to be, but he had just been had. He had been had by an abuser that was using him. The, the hard thing when you're trying to deliver someone like this is, is they need the truth. The truth hurts, but living a lie hurts longer. Come on, give God a big, big hand, praise Go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 20, 28. Proverbs 25, 28. Is anybody getting anything out of this? So as you are praying with people, now someone would just say, once again, get out of the oil, grease me, slap it on my head, and don't tell me nothing. Why do some Christians act like wise counsel is something we should run from? Come on, it's a gift of the Spirit. My God! Wise, wise, do you know to minister, listen, to uproot the ground that demons are using and that even wounds and hurts are using, you've got to deal with truth. You've got to deal with truth. And you've got to come to grips with it. Apostle, says this, one time I was, I was counseling and, and, and uh, ended up telling the young lady, as we were counseling, I said, I said, the situation you're in, you're being used, darling. And she was like, why does every time I get someone, they leave me? Something must be wrong with me. And she was going on and on about how terrible it was. How, how she, she must be a terrible person. I said, sis, can I stop you? I said, can I stop you, girlfriend? I said, what you need to do is drop confetti and have a parade. I said, because you're feeling bad because you were able to discern and catch not to marry this rascal. Come on. This demon you will get ready to marry you feel bad because you found out that it's not going to work. Listen to me. It hurts. It breaks your heart. But if it ain't going to work, it's better to cut the chase than keep staying in. You either can hurt leaving or hurt longer staying. That's really what it comes down to. Did you get that? You can either hurt because you left or hurt longer because you stayed. I said to her, sis, God is having me form this for a reason. Because some of y'all in here, different ones y'all in here, you need to hear this. I said to her, sis, you're sitting here weeping before me in this counseling session because you found out. I said, wait a minute, I'm not insensitive. I'm not insensitive. I got it. It hurts your feelings. I said, but sis, can I give you the, 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 the real truth here? I said, sweetheart, you ask God for discernment. Yes. You ask God for truth. Yes. He gave it to you. 
He just stopped you from getting into a bad marriage. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going to say something and shame the devil. Might make a couple preachers mad. I wonder how many preachers have beat to death people who got married who should never have gotten married, never realizing that the problem is not their divorce. The problem is them getting married. I'm going to say it again. The problem is not their divorce. And for the record, for you write me a whole bunch of letters, there's no such thing as a holy divorce. Divorce is some kind of disaster. Something didn't go right. And thank God the Lord picks our lives up and forgives us. Everybody got that? Now moving right along. I know in all of these 40 some years of deliverance teaching, I have met thousands of people and had thousands of counseling sessions. And when I talked to them, what happened, what their pastor did not discern was they should have never got married. Or they, or they were so hot for each other or so afraid to be alone. I'm such and such age. I don't want to be alone all my life. And they settle for something that's dangerous, that is abusive. Can I give, the Lord, give the Lord a big, big hand, please. When, when, you're, when you have an evil soul tie in an abusive relationship, you lose the rule and control and restraint of your own spirit. You lose three things. You lose the rule of control. You lose the restraint over your own spirit. And here goes what it says in Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Evil soul ties with abusers causes you to lose control, restraint, and rule of your own spirit. Got that? It does. Next thing, the toxic behaviors were there before you decided to enter into the relationship with them. They didn't act like that just because they got with you. They were like that before they met you. Maybe it's some. Maybe it's something wrong with me that Evelyn don't treat me like nothing. Maybe, maybe it's me. No, sweetheart. You don't want to treat me that way. The only thing wrong with me is me being able to get myself delivered, get myself to the point that I can walk away from that bondage and not blame myself. God is healing you, baby girl, all right? This happens when I preach. The anointing and the truth that I speak goes directly into a crowd. Amen. He's healing you. He's healing the wound now. We've seen it a lot of times, Ricky, y'all ain't with in many of our services. Let your anointing and your grace. You hear me? The signs were there. You may have chosen to look the other way, but the signs were there. They were there when you were dating. They were there when you were dating, but you looked the other way. Why? Because the moment of fun was so good that you forgot um, you let a moment get you ca- caught up into a, m- a lifetime. A moment, a moment to a lifetime. Give God a big, big hand, praise. <laughs> Proverbs. Praise him, hallelujah. Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. Hallelujah. When you get it, say amen. Is anybody enjoying this? Yes, sir. It's good teaching, ain't it? Now, once again, my method of deliverance when I'm ministering and praying with people is counseling, talking to the person, got that? Getting to the root cause. And God can bring healing to that. You follow me? We wouldn't dare stir up stuff like this without praying with you. Amen? Amen. Now, Proverbs 23, it says, and I'm using the New International Version and the King James. I've combined them, baby girl. And here goes how it's going to sound. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring or the issue of life. Uh-huh. And above all else. And one scripture says, guard thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Got that? Somebody say, guard your heart. People don't always build walls to keep others out. There are times it is done to protect whatever is left within. Did you hear that? I'm going to say that again. That was on my Facebook page, those who follow me. 
People don't always build walls to keep others out. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of the flows issues of life. There are times it is done to protect whatever is left within you. Sometimes you have to have a wall up that says no interest, no interest in here unless you qualify. It is not a sin. It's not a sin to expect the best for yourself. What? What did he just say? Let me say it one more time. It is not a sin, nor is it prideful, nor do you act like can't nobody be, be married to you but Jesus. It's not a sin. I'm, I'm saying it. It's not a sin to be selective with what you want to do with your mind, will, and emotion. Are you hearing me? Good God, I love you. Here goes a quote from a person that was abused. And it went like this. So while I was busy saving you from hell, you were pushing me further to it. Now that's tough. Because the abuse always tries to rescue the abuser. Oh God, oh God. Say, why, why is your eye black? Well, you just had a bad day. You just don't understand. It's the job. They, 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 they took $2 an hour from him, so he's going through. That why you got a black eye. Why you got a black eye? Constantly making excuses for per- well, you know why? You know why I cussed Evelyn and just called all kinds of bees. I, 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 well, you, girl, girl, you know, just sometimes the way you the way you walk around here just makes a man act like that. You see? No, I called her that because I'm I'm twisted. I called her that because it's abusive, not acceptable. Are y'all hearing me? I said this to marriage couples in here. Well, any time I do something or say something that hurts my wife's feelings, and I say to her, Evelyn, I'm sorry, I should not have acted that way, she'll say to me, she said, honey, it's okay, you, you got a lot on you. I said, I don't accept that. I said, Evelyn, I will never accept that I got a lot on me so I can talk to you in that kind of way. I said, how, come, how, come I, how come I don't call you and talk that way? Come on. Huh? How, how come, Ricky, how come I don't call you when I got a lot on me? How come I don't call you and, and, and hurt your feelings? All right. or, or, or talk to you like you're a man, like you're not a man. How come it's free to do it to Evelyn? Are y'all getting this? Yeah. Oh, look at me. This is how I live. That's why we got 40 some years strong marriage. Because neither of us is going to take excuses for our actions. There you go. I'm just saying, I mean, this is not a marriage seminar, but it might help some of y'all. I mean, why should I go off on her? Because I've had a rough day. I, 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 tomorrow night, I'm going to get home at 12 or 1 o'clock. I, I, it's been rough on the plane. I come in the house. Woman, what's that? you're so stupid. You didn't have the outside light on. You mean the plane trip did that to me? Great apostle. You anointed preacher. Yeah, I'm talking to preachers now. I know I'm making you preachers uncomfortable, but I'm talking to you. Why is it that you can preach Jesus, the anointing, the power of God, the love of Jesus, through the Spirit, get home in your house and act like a junkyard dog? Own it. Preach. You need to work on your attitude. Own it. Deliverance comes from owning stuff, too. And don't tell me that little religion, I don't claim this or that. Oh, please. So if I was to answer her the wrong way, you hear me, sis? If I said something to her that hurt her feelings, I can tell. I don't even need nine gifts to tell. I've been married to that woman 40 some years. You think I need nine gifts to tell? I hurt her. I hurt her. I tell you what, I, I, I'll never say who. I was counseling a professional that all of y'all know. And I said to him, if a man had done to your wife, what you, what you did to her to hurt her the way you have, you to kill him with your bare hands. I said, you did it. I said, now, I'm going to pray for her healing and deliverance. But now you sat down here. Yeah, and this dude was no joke, okay? I said, you sat down here and you minister to her. You repent to her of how you broke her. I said, you broke her. Didn't you really think it would make her die on the inside? Take care of the pre-kids. That's the one before you came. And then take care of the is-kids. Those are the ones y'all had. While you chase something out here, some hoochie out here across the street. Pardon my English class. Some body out here, they man that's living in the kind of way. You chasing that, chasing that. And this woman is home faithfully. Didn't you really think it was hurting her? 
Didn't you really think it broke her little spirit? You didn't think it would? What's wrong with you? What would make you think that's okay? And he sat down there and shook his head and he began to weep. I said, you did this to her. I forget that lady that they got me. Y'all can get mad with me all you want to, but sometimes when I look at Ayana, is that her name? Sometimes when I, that chick band, <laughs> I know. I'm going like, look, people got to own their stuff, man. To be the help. And God ministered and brought her healing. Give God a great big hand, praise. The heart must be guarded and protected while the process of healing is at work. The heart must be guided and protected while the healing process is at work. No, come to church, cough in a bag, roll on the floor. That's the end of it. It's not. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not. It is not. See, because if, if we're ministering to you, if you're getting pastoral ministry, or if you're seeking even your own healing and what have you, understand, somebody, look at your neighbor and say, it's a process. It's a process. Yes. So everything I'm saying may sound like to some of you, uh, get deliverance, then walk home and throw everything out, get rid of. It's, that's not what we're saying. What I'm saying to you is, you start by getting your own healing. You start by information. You start by understanding the dynamics of where you're at. Then you have to come up the course of what the Holy Spirit is going to have you to do to rectify the situation. Do you understand? And, and especially to you married couples in here and what have you. You have, we're not going to teach something here where you just jump out and go do something. I've been to the conference this weekend. I'm leaving. What? I'm leaving now. <laughs> That's not what we're saying. That is not what we're saying. But you do understand you need healing. Oh, you hear me? And, and you know what? And, and let me say this to you. When we say talk about praying and ask the Lord to help you forgive the, the abuser, we are not exchanging your abuser is, is innocent of any charges. What we're trying to get you to do is let the vengeance be God's and not yours. Because it's too heavy for us. Because see, if I take vengeance, I go overboard. Nah, 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 nah. I ain't even going to start. Now, you, we don't even want to list how we would be. So vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will recompense. Allow the Holy Spirit to deal with your abuser. But deal with your heart. The heart must be guarded and protected while the process of healing is at work. So much so. That if you just come out of something like that, you might not want to rush in to another relationship. Just take some time and get healed. Somebody said, take some time and get healed. But the, but the clock is running. Listen, I don't know y'all understand this term, but I mess with y'all. I'd rather for it to be the clock than the guillotine. Now, some folk understand old school, understand what I talk, talked about. <laughs> King Louis created a guillotine and even killed them with it. But that's the thing that whacks your head off. Sometimes, amen, rather than get your head whacked off, get healed. Work on getting healed. Those breaking free of abusive relationships say they were in a place where in their mind they couldn't break free. In the beginning, in their mind, it's like they couldn't do it. It's a, somebody said, it is war. Is anybody getting out of this? Get anything out of this? Amen. Psalms chapter 40 verse 2. Now, now, now this is this. Psalms chapter 40 verse 2. I like reading this one here. It says, he brought me out, up, up, out of a, also out of a horrible pit and out of the marble clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. Now when you've gone through abuse like this, it is a horrible pit. Don't start beating yourself up with blame. God set you free. Don't start beating yourself up. You are not. Listen to this. Listen to this, boys and girls. You got your crayons? Here goes another good one. You are not a failure at relationships. You got into one that didn't work. Now, what would have been a failure is not to recognize it and, and, and go on and proceed. That would have messed you up. Victims often think, here goes another one I get because we always deal with breaking curses through 30, 40,000 generations. Victims often think they're cursed and will never be loved. And that's just not true. You are not cursed and you will be and can be loved. That is not true. Now, I'll tell you what else, too. 
you got a choice, girlfriend, whether you want to pursue another relationship or just say I'm happy in Jesus just as I am. That's totally up to you. That's totally up. So I said, well, I don't never want to move forward with another. So I, you know what? I wish you nothing but the best. Got that? And that is your choice. It's the toxic behaviors were there before you decided to enter into the relationship with them. The signs were there. You may have chosen to look the other way, but the signs were there. When I, uh, uh, when me, me and Evelyn worked at, a, at the institution together, and uh, when I started dating her, talking to her, now, uh, you understand me? One of the lady girls said, hmm, he'll change. You wait, when you, when you marry him, he'll change. Evelyn told him, said, no, I think this is who he is. And 40 years later, this is who he is. But they told they would tell him, you know, one of my boss said, don't marry her. You don't want to get married to her. And I, 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 I sized up who I was dealing with. I saw the pros and cons. And by the way, can I help you out with something? I didn't have to. Listen, I, I ain't play that dumb game about, well, I'm looking for me. A, uh, you know how they say sometimes I'm looking for me a woman with no kids and you have three. And why are you with him? I lost somebody. I don't know somebody. Did I lose you? I'm looking for a woman with no children. You have three. So why are you with him if he's looking for a woman with no children? Thank you, sis. Thanks for the amen back there. <laughs> when I brought, when Evelyn came in my life, I had a son and a daughter. If she wasn't ready for that package, she would not be the chosen one. Somebody by another name would be sitting home right now or possibly sitting here. Y'all, y'all didn't get that. See, see, you believe there's no future in your life past what, didn't, what rejected you. But I maintain to tell you that rejection is just an open door to selection. Well, I'm moving right along. Are, are you understanding? Now, wait a minute. I thought this was about demons. This is about getting them to the root cause of how the soul can be destroyed, fragmented, and wounded through abuse. Got that? Let me go on to the next line. John 8.32, and y'all know the scripture, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The abusive partner generally denies any responsibility for problems. It's you. It's always, matter of fact, I have ministered healing to people that have been told it was them so long until they're not sure. That's right. their, their head is just as calling. I remember ministering to one individual that the person in their life would move stuff and mess with her head just, just, to, just to get at her. He was actually trying to make her feel like she was going to have a mental bro- breakdown. Now you would say to yourself, why would anyone treat anybody like that? Because they're demonized and they're controlling. The mind control in, in this soul tie is you are convinced something is wrong with you and not your abuser. Got that? Soul ties causes emotional battles in your head with a person you no longer have contact with. They're gone, but yet still controlling your mind. You hear? You, how, how does this work? Glad you ask. Glad you asked. You ask nice questions. How does this work? You hear the abusive words in your mind and emotions until you're healed in Jesus' name. You hear what they say. You are so dumb. You are so stupid. You think anybody would want you? You must be crazy. Ain't nobody want you after I look, look at you. And you can hear that. I, I've seen folks that you look at them and tell them, my God, look, sis, you are a beautiful human being. And they have been convinced that they're ugly, they're, they're, they're nothing but a junkyard dog. And the reason why it's setting like that is because their soul was so wounded that the healing that they need. When we, when we stop now, and they, that music that you played earlier, Apostle, what was the name of that song, Man of God, that she was just playing, he, the brother told me about it, was very beautiful. Waymaker. 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 I would love to have that played very low in the background as we begin to pray for the Holy Spirit to bring healing. Amen? Because I know he's touching something. I, and listen, I understand this is not basically comfortable. But it's healing, and we need it. Amen? Amen. 
Psalm 139, 14. Check this verse out. I'm almost done and we'll get ready to pray. Everybody all right? I got two more frames if you can bear with me. If you can bear with me, I have two more frames. And I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell you what I used to tell people. I got two more frames and I'll close and pray. Then I will prove to you exactly what I'm talking about. Then I will show you not only in a message, but by the anointing, the healing and the wounds that's going to get healed in your life. We will prove that God heals those areas of deep wounds in our soul from former relationships. Psalms 139 verse 14. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wondrously made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul nor if I would. Did you see this woman of God? Did you see that tail in the back? Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul nor if I will. But if the soul isn't free. If the soul is fragmented. It don't know. If the soul is fragmented. You don't know how fearfully. And wonderfully you are made. If your soul is fragmented. If your soul is fragmented. You don't know that you're marvelously made. You're a marvelous work of God. You must start remembering who God made you. Before you were convinced you were worthless. You learned that some people are not good for you no matter how much you love them. Don't devalue yourself because they don't value you. Know your worth even if they don't. Know your worth even if they don't. Signs of an abusive soul tie. Your desires, hopes, and dreams are not important, just theirs. You try to, they, they, they're theirs to, to, to stop you from spending time. Listen, they try to stop you from spending time with family and friends. You have to cut off everybody. They make you feel like you, you have to be watched. They make you feel like you have to watch what you say. You came from being a full-blown adult. Now even your kids got more freedom than you. Because you have to be careful. Careful what you say. Can't say your feelings. They put you down and humiliate you. Have been aggressive or violent. Treat you nice. Now this is, hey, are y'all ready? Can we have some grown folk talk? In a decent manner, young folk. They treat you nice if you have sex. Because really, after their anger, that's when you get back together. Got that? They have temper tantrums are normal in their relationship. Temper tantrums are normal in your relationship. It's abuse. Physical violence followed by sex to make up. Physical violence followed by sex to make up. We're going to go before the Lord. And ask him to heal. To heal us in here. Hallelujah. If you will pray along with me. I ask you. Amen. To pray along with me for this healing. Here goes what I didn't ask anybody to do. Run home and, and go anywhere. I didn't ask anybody to, 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 to leave anybody. I ask you to get healed. I ask you for the allow the Holy Spirit. To heal those areas. It's okay. Pray along with me. Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your love, Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, I bring before you today the wounds of abuse. Father, in Jesus' name, I know everything is not a demon. And that which is a demonic bondage, I want you to break it and set me free. Father, in Jesus' name, help me to release my abuser in your hands. In the name of Jesus, all the anger, bitterness, and frustration, I ask you to loose me now from. Father, in Jesus' name, you said you forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, Father, to forgive them and forgive me. Because I don't want to carry bitterness. I do not want to carry vengeance. I welcome the Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit to bring healing into these broken areas. In the name of Jesus. Father God, all through this entire room, I pray in Jesus' name.